Hello, hello, come on in, come on in, come on. Let's talk about some business analyst stuff, right? So we have started off the new year in fine style because you're seeing more of me. And who doesn't want to see more of Carolis? Okay, who? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, so like I told you guys that I was going to come up with some more videos more frequently, you know, with just quick tips and quick answers that you've been asking. And so that's what I'm doing. Now, just as I was scrolling through um, my YouTube feed, I found some... Some videos I subscribed some time ago to some uh, some channels, you know, some celebrity bloggers and so on. And I just happened to click on one, and I was watching this girl talk about some celebrity gossip. And there was a group of women, and they were just so excited, you know, they were motivated, they were like having a blast. Some were drinking wine, and they were just chatting and just enjoying talking about other people's lives. You know, like, I personally am like, you do you, boo. Like, I don't really care about celebrities' life like that. But these women were just super excited. And they're, they're you know, they're channels with men who do this as well. I mean, you have TMZ, you have all of these channels, and that's what they do for a living. And I just thought about it. I was like, wow, look how, in, you know, look how excited they are about the stories they're telling and the things that they're doing. And what if we were just even half that excited about our own careers? What if we were excited about getting up every day and working in a field where we have impact? What if we were excited about changing our lives and changing our family's lives because of the work that we do and the compensation we can get because we do it? I mean, wow, if we had the same amount of enthusiasm or even just half that, if we even have half the enthusiasm towards our job that I see some other people have towards jobs that are more, I would say superfluous, like talking about a celebrity's life and who they married and who they had kids with and what they're doing. It's, I mean, it, it feels entertaining, I guess, but it really doesn't have a big impact on the world, I would say, at least not in my world. <laughs> so I just wish we had the same enthusiasm towards business analysis. And that really brings me into the topic of today, which is, is a BA career a good one? Is business analysis a good career to have? And that's what we're going to be talking about right now. All right, gang. So today's video is brought to you by PM Milestone 2.0 Pro. And PM Milestone 2.0 Pro is a collection of over 9,000 product management and business templates that's going to be helpful for you in your next project. So I'm going to link this below in the description section. You're going to come here from the link, click on download template, and it's going to open for you this wonderful bundle of all your project management templates. Right now it's only at $49 and a special offer. And that's a steal for what you're getting. I mean, you're getting so many options, use case, test plans, you know, project timesheets, so many options. There's Lots and lots of templates in here. So go get it. When you do that, you're actually supporting what I'm doing here on YouTube. And I would really appreciate that. So go check out the link in the description section to get your templates from PM Milestone. Thank you. So I'm a very objective person, obviously, right? And I'm going to tell you the truth regardless. Obviously, I'm in the BA space, or I have been. Right now, I work as a product manager but I've been at business analyst for many years and it's kind of not too far from each other, really. So, you know, you might take it to say, you know, I'm gonna be biased towards it because I worked in it, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna tell the truth and you're gonna walk away with your own interpretation regardless, right? So is a business analyst career a good career to have? And I would say it depends on what you consider to be good and what you are about. I am sure there are many people who would have walked into this field and started working it and be like, mm, 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 ain't for me, boy. Uh, this is not this is not my thing. And left, right? They, there must have been many people who would have started down this path and abandoned it because it didn't fit their personality. They didn't like the environment. They didn't like the task they had to do. Um, and they didn't feel that this was their calling. But... For the rest of us, for many, a lot of people, if you are 
into if you have a certain personality and i did a video on is a business analyst career right for you which you should go check out it's going to be somewhere here um it does expose some of the things that you can know just from your own personality from your innate behavior as to whether or not this is a career that you should be endeavoring to get into. Because it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. And so good, is it a good career, uh, really depends on what you consider to be good. Now, in the general scheme of things, people look at good as being something that is high in demand, something that pays well, something that has prestige, and you know, you know, you, you feel proud. To, for the job that you do, or you can say, you know, your family can be proud of you because of this is a career that you um, have gone into. And I would say from that perspective, sure, yes. The business analyst career is definitely <laughs> a good career for those reasons. Um, but there are other things that make it a good career that I think that I would like to talk to you guys about. So for one, for me, one of the most important things is not just the compensation, how much money I get paid. I believe that, you know, I'm a good, I'm good at what I do, right? And whenever I am tasked to do something, I bring myself to it. I bring my entire, my mind, my, 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 my thinking, like I am completely involved in it. Like I engross myself in it. And so I'm going to do a good job because if I don't know something, I'm going to go find out. You best believe it. And I'm going to find out to the point where I become this me. I become the expert at this thing. Uh, even more than people that are there. So I'm, I'm just, I just have that personality where I get involved. If I'm going to do something, I say yes, then you're going to get quality. That's just my mo. Like this is how I work. Um, other people may just do things just to meet a timeline, or they just want to get it done and be done with it. But I'm doing it with soul because I believe work. There's value in work, and I, I serve God when I work. I, <laughs> honestly believe that you know i'm a christian uh as you can see there's a nice little cross right here that didn't give you a clue <laughs> but you know i serve god in my work and so i'm doing it with you know not for my employers necessarily and yes because i enjoy the result of it but i'm doing it also to praise god so that's part of the the thinking behind what i do but just just to say that part of the reason why i like business analysis is because Outside of the money that you're paid, which is a, I'm going to get to that in a minute, which is a definitely a good salary, you have impact. You have impact, and that's important. Like you, you affect things, and you cause other people's lives to be better. And so you see someone struggling with something, and they can't solve it for themselves. They don't have the power. They don't have the. They're not in the position. There's all kinds of reasons why they can't solve it for themselves. But you can do something in your role that can make their everyday lives better. Now, what bigger reward could there be in a job? You know, you're not just going and punching the clock and you punch out and that's it. You know, you're doing something that affects people's lives. And that, for me, is a great, great uh, feeling and uh, motivation to be in the business analyst job. And that's part of the reason why I think it's such a great career. I think it's a good job to have. So the, the fact that you have impact, for example, let's say you worked at Walmart, right? And I'm just picking on Walmart. So I don't know if this is how their service works or not. So don't hold me to it, right? So let's say that their customer service is such that you have to go in and you have to present all these documentation and, you know, it's just a long wait and they have to go verify with supervisors before they can do any kind of, I don't know, refund. I don't know what it is, but something like that and imagine you come up with a process that cuts their wait time down from maybe half an hour down to 15 minutes or even 10 minutes you know how much time you freed up for people i mean you've just made life easier you've made it easier for the clerk who is doing it you've made it easier for the customer you know the company can make more money and people just have a flawless easy experience when they come to do the service at walmart and because Walmart is such a big company with so many, you know, customers, you just you just by doing one simple change in the process, you've just multiplied the, you know, the, the free time that you've given to endless amount of customers, and you've made many, many, many clerks' lives better. Can you imagine that? I mean, what job does that? You know, very few, right? So. That's why the value of being a business analyst because you can affect so many people at once and you can just, you're just always looking for ways to improve things. And when you improve things, you're improving people's lives as well, even though you don't realize it, but you do. Um, the other thing that I love about business analysts is it's very important. 
So, I mean, this is gonna sound bad, but there are some jobs that are not as important. I'm just gonna say it, right? Some jobs, you know, people live with a constant fear that they can be let go at any time. Although business analysts can be let go too, but like the job can be easily replaced with a machine or with a software tool or something like that. And they feel like, you know, gosh, at any given moment, I'm out because they can easily replace me and they live with that fear. Now, because business analysts are actually thinkers, we're thinking about the solution. It's not something that's dropped on our plate and we just have to just work with it. No, we are actually coming up with things. We are the change agents. We articulate the rationale for this change to the organization. We're we are interviewing people. We're uncovering what the real source of the problems are and then you know, designing and coming up with the future state and how it's gonna be improved. That's something that's a little bit harder to automate, right? And so you're vital, you know, you're vital to the business, especially when you're in the technology space where it's changing so fast and they need you to keep up with the change and they also need you to make sure it doesn't affect whatever they already had going on. So the role of a business analyst will be very, very important, especially in technology uh, verticals but also in other verticals as well. But it's just, you are you are not as easily replaced and therefore your, your value to the organization feels amplified, right? Because you're vital, they need you, you know, in most cases. Um, the only time when I find that they get rid of business analysts would be if there's a merger, they already have business analysts or um, they have downsized the company for some reason. And so not to say the job is completely secure, but you just feel like that you're not as easily replaced by another technology, right? The other thing that makes it a good job is that it's high in demand. I mean, if you go on LinkedIn, or you go on Indeed or any of these other job posting boards, you search a business analyst, you see a whole lot of list of business analysts pop up because it's high in demand. There are some jobs that you search and you find one or two or three and it's the same few companies and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm stuck. No, not with business analysis. With business analysts, you know, the roles may be different. They even might call it something different, but if you look at the job description, you see that the, the actions that you're doing, the tasks you're doing is really into the business analysis space. So it's high in demand, which is great. Um, it's also a little, I would say a little lucrative. Yeah, lucrative, meaning that when you tell someone that you're a business analyst, they think all kinds of things. Sometimes they're not correct, right? They think that you analyze businesses for a living, which they don't know what that is, but it feels fancy. <laughs> you know, or they think that you're just a, you're a corporate person, you know. So it has this kind of lure to it. And people don't know what it is for sure, but they assume it's something important. And so they ascribe to you uh, this level of, you know, accomplishment just for you having that career, which may or may not matter to you, but it doesn't sound... It sounds like a very, very interesting thing and it, it, it causes more questions like, what is that? How does that work? What do you do? And you know, just the idea of being an analyst, they know that you're a thinker. And so it's actually a great title to have as well. The other thing about business analysts that I found is if you like to solve problems and you're a person that you don't really want everything to be dictated down to you. You like to be able to come up with things. It's going to be very well suited for you. You know, uh, I have met people who they don't like to do that. Actually, I've met people where they get very frustrated very quickly if every single thing down to the T is not told to them how to do it. If you give them like an open book kind of okay, solve this problem, they get confused. They come up with a million questions. You answer each of them and. The process gets so convoluted, you might as well do it yourself. Some people don't like to have that freedom, that big wide range of things that they can do. Some people love it for it to be narrow and to be specific because they want to do a good job. They take quality and pride in their work. They want to do the job with quality and they feel like the wider the scope is for them to get something done, the more risk there is that it's not going to be done well and they don't know if that's what you expect. And some people don't have the skills to kind of you know, figure that out. So there are people that don't like um, jobs like these where 
you have this plethora of answers. You have to pick the right one or you have to figure out what the answers are. You have to figure out the problem even. <laughs> so because many times you don't even know what the real problem is. They come to you with some kind of symptom and you have to be like a doctor and go and figure out the, the actual cause and then solve for the right thing. So some people don't like that. Some people don't have the skills for that. They don't like it. So it's not suited for everybody, like I was saying earlier. But if you're the kind of person and you thrive in this kind of ambiguous environment. You thrive in just getting in there and so, okay, all of this mess over here, all of this mess over here, let's fix this mess, <laughs> right? Let's figure this thing out and get it working right. And you love going into something and being able to build it from the ground up or even getting into something that's already built and finding the places where it's not quite right and just kind of fixing it, you know, finding out what are all the pieces that come together, find out what each person's role is, how this role can have the other role, you know, like working with different people to make sure everybody agrees on what the right thing is to do and then having all the tasks and all the actions and all the approvals and so on to get the right future state uh, implemented. If you like that kind of thing, and you may not even know that you like it because it's not something that you put a label to. It's something you're probably already doing in your family, in your home, with your friends. And you just don't know that there's a label to that and that is that solutioning, right? Which is something, I, a term I coined in one of my other videos. But being a person who loves to solve problems is going to be great for you in this career. And this is why it makes it a good career for me. Because I like solving problems. And if you're a person like me, this will make business analysis a good career for you as well. The other thing about business analysis is that I think a lot of us would like is that it's really a middle management role, right? It's not a role, based on what I just told you about not having everything dictated down to you, it's a middle management role where you're managing things. You may not be managing people, you may not have to deal with staff who report up to you, but you're managing things, you're managing the reporting, you're managing the documentation, managing the process, you're managing the tasks. So you have all these things to do and you're managing all of them. So you could be a manager without a direct report. And so you start off in this middle management and you can only go up, from, well, hopefully only go up from there. So many people struggle to get into management. When you become a business analyst, you're already there. So that's another thing that makes it a good career to have. Another thing that I like about business analysis is that you get to be, you know, in the decision making room, right? Even if you're not making the final decisions, but because you have to understand a lot of what goes into these decisions and you're going to be able to solve the business problems based on some of the decisions that are being made, you get to be, you know, rubbing shoulders with some very powerful people. So you may be in the executive room with the VP, with the CEO, with, you know, all of the I, I call them toppers, top a top. <laughs> you know, I'm Jamaican, I gotta say the slang, top a top. <laughs> Basically the big fish in the room, right? So you get to sit in the room and you listen to how they think, you hear the rationale behind things, and you sometimes you're just in there taking notes because you don't have a say. Sometimes, sometimes you do have a say. Sometimes you can say, no, but this is not the right thing. And we, you know, sometimes you get to be the customer advocate. So while the, you know, the executives are debating different options, you can say, but the customer really is looking to do this and this and this and this and this, so that you can be the voice of the customer where the customer can't be there. So you get exposure to higher level strategic thinking and thought leadership, and you understand from a high level sometimes why decisions were made. And so when you're at, you know, you're going through the, different levels to get the implementation of this thing done, you can have a very well-rounded understanding of, of how we got here, right? And that's important. Sometimes when you work in companies, you never see the CEO or even sit in a room with him. You never, you know, really interface with the VPs and stuff like that. But when you're a business analyst, not all the time, but sometimes you have the opportunity to do that. And even if you don't yet get to be in that room with them, you're like one person removed because your product manager might be in the room or your, you know, your project manager might be the one telling you what they decided. So you're, you're not too far away. And this is great because it's going to help you to grow, to build, 
to become strategic yourself and to look for that next next step because you're going to start off as a business analyst but you're trying to go up right so you're going to go up into management you're going to go up into vp and hopefully maybe you know wherever else you can go from there so those are the reasons i think that business analyst job is a good career so i got done talking about business analysis being a good career without mentioning the salary which is what everybody probably is waiting to know <laughs> so yes you do get a good salary from being a business analyst of course it depends on your company and your country and the state you're in every state may have a different salary every country and so on but generally speaking it's a very high paying job um the iiba which is the international institute of business analysts does a yearly salary survey and they did one for 2020 you can go check that one out and that one i'll put the link in the description and while you're there, please subscribe and please like and also leave a comment. Um, and that that survey actually does give you some insight as to how much a business analyst gets paid. I also have an article up on carlys.com that says the very same thing, like how much the business analysts get paid. And that will also be in the link below. So click on that link and go find that out. But it's a very high paying job. Um, Surprisingly enough, in 2019, I think men were actually being paid less than women in this field. So there's a lot of women in the business analyst field, and um, it's 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 very lucrative and it's high in demand. Like I said before, you get paid well. You work in corporate environment most of the time. There might be some travel. Um, not every business analyst job will have travel, but there are some that do. And you know, you get to basically work a lot with um, basic tools like word tools you don't really have to use any fancy tools I have another video on different uh, software tools that business analysts use but yeah in terms of salary um, the skills that you bring to the table they really compensate you well for that and uh, it's a high paying job so yes that's good too I think it's one of those careers that I stumbled upon and I'm happy, thank you Jesus, <laughs> that I found it <laughs> because I found the thing. I found the thing that makes me shine, the thing that I enjoy doing and the thing that I can do very well. And I hope for you that you also find it. And if you need some help with business analysis, just want to understand the whole world and what's going on, all that stuff, please go check out my website. I have some free courses up there. You go to carlys.com, you go to free courses, and you can watch all the videos that I've put in different topics. I've organized it for you in different topics that you can go and watch it all free so you're not losing anything. You just go watch it, understand what this field is about, and you can you know, judge for yourself if this is a good career for you. Now, I will be coming out with a paid course and that's going to be for people who are starting out in the field. It's going to give you the fundamentals of business analysis. It's going to help you to work through a real world project. You know, you're going to see all of the different things that come together from scratch. You're starting from zero, like from nothing, right? And hopefully by the end of that course, you'll have the confidence and know that you can go out there and apply for a job and get it because you understand the principles of business analysis so that's coming out that's going to be a paid course but in the meantime please check out my free course and please check out the sponsors of this video which i'll put in the description box and like and subscribe while you're down there get the you know let let the video and let this go out to other people who might also be asking this question so subscribe like comment check out the sponsors and go to carlys.com and check out those free courses hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.